So one thing to notice here is how many carbons are there in benzene? Six. Six. But how many different carbons can the positive charge be on after attack? Only three. If you actually draw the resonance structures, there's only one, two, three carbons that the positive charge can be on. So which three carbons can it be on? Well, it depends on whether it was an OP attack or an M attack. Uh, after an OP attack, one of the three carbons the positive charge can be on can be the carbon that's attached to the electron donating substituent. But after a meta attack, we just proved that the three carbons that the positive charge can be on don't include this key carbon over here. So notice that the nitrogen here is never really getting a chance to donate its electrons by resonance. There is no good way for the nitrogen to donate its electrons because it's never next to the positive charge. So it's, uh, it's not going to be uh, nearly as effective at doing its stabilization job over here. So this is really the explanation for why these activators are O and P directors. An activator wants to be as close to the positive charge as possible, so it can donate its electron, but it can only get as close as possible if there's a resonance structure where the positive charge is um, on the same carbon that the substituent is on, and that only happens for O and P attack. It would be a good homework exercise to draw the resonance structures for the para attack. I didn't do that, but it's really the same as for the ortho attack. So there's a similar argument for O and P as for para. Uh, and then it's not too hard to reverse up. Something else that you might be asked to do again is to say, identify the most preferred resonance structure. Well, again, this is especially preferred here because it's close to the electron donating. And here we don't have that most preferred resonance structure. Now, what if this was a nitro group? Now, when we have a nitro group, the whole idea is reversed. Now, with the ortho attack, is this a happy or unhappy resonance structure? Unhappy. Now, this is the least happy of the resonance structures. Nature doesn't like having two positive charges, but it hates having two positive charges right next to each other. Right? Positive charges want to be separated. Notice that, say, in this picture, nature is happier. Here, the positive charges have some separation between each other. Nature doesn't like having these two positive charges, but at least they're separated from each other. Whereas here, the positive charges are smushed right next to each other. So now this is the least favored resonance structure. Nature hates having this resonance structure over here. So nature is happy that after the meta attack, we don't have that situation where the two positive charges are right next to each other. Here's the resonance structures after the meta attack, and now it's a good thing that the positive charge is never on this top carbon, because now the positive charge can never get right next to the positive charge on this nitrogen over here. Um, so that explains why the logic reverses for these deactivators. The deactivators like having these types of resonance structures where the positive charge is never right next to the substituent, so they prefer the meta attack, because that's what gives us these resonance structures. Uh, and they don't like the ONP attack, because that does give us this terrible resonance structure where the two, um, where the electron withdrawing substituent is next to the positive charge. We know that most, uh, a lot of electron withdrawing substituents don't necessarily have full positive charges. But anyway, you want to keep this positive charge as far away as possible from the electron withdrawing substituent, because the electron withdrawers destabilize positive charges. So as, if this is a deactivating electron withdrawing substituent, even if it's not a nitro, this would still be a very disfavored resonance structure. So that explains why all these deactivators are meta directors. And finally, halogens are very complicated because there's a very close competition between the induction and resonance effects. So rather than trying to explain them, we're just going to memorize that they happen to be O and P directors. We're just going to memorize that the halogens are O and P directors, even though they're deactivators. All the other deactivators are meta directors. That was easy to understand. We just explained that. And we're going to memorize without trying to explain why this halogen is an O and P director. Now, actually, um, 
The second language book has a really valiant attempt to explain why these are both deactivators and O and P directors. So if you want to read uh, a really uh, a really nice attempt to explain the halogens, you can look in the second language book. But that's something that usually is not going into too, too much detail on tests. For our purposes, we can just memorize the halogens as a special case. But you can expect that you will be explained and expected to explain why these are activating and O and P directors. And you will be expected to explain why these are deactivators and measure directors using these resonance structures that we just did. That's a very common type of topic. recommend having a nice clean copy of this table in your notes. These are the activators, these are the deactivators, these are the O&P directors, and these are the meta directors. Now we put in three equivalents, so we expect three um, substituents to add, and what type of director is this? So we're adding just to the ortho and the para positions, not to the meta position. Why didn't we need a catalyst here? Because there's already a strong um, activator there. That's right. Uh, and apparently, even though these are slightly deactivating, this is going to overwhelm them, and then we're still going to be able to add all three of these. This is the reaction they mentioned in the book. Probably the first thing you should do is, is what I saw that you did. Draw the structure out in more detail over here. So is this an electron donator or withdrawer? Withdrawer. By resonance. I don't think we included that specifically in our list here, but it falls into the same pattern of electron withdrawing by resonance. So is it going to be easy or hard to add the next substituent? Hard. Hard. But if we manage to add the next substituent anyway, maybe that's why we need heat, because this is hard. If we do manage to add the next substituent, what type of director is this? Meta. It's a meta director. And you memorize that this is the substituent from these reagents. Doesn't matter whether you add this meta position or this meta position, because they're equivalent to each other. Now, 
This is not the only product. There will be some amounts of ortho and para, but usually you're just going to be asked to do the major product here. So this is definitely the major product. 85%. Uh, no, where did I get this? I'm looking at the wrong thing. 80% would look like this. So usually, uh, in this case, they're testing the directing effect. So this would definitely be the major product over here. Good. So notice, what does it mean that the, what, what, is, what do we know about these groups? Once we add on this group, that means that it's going to be difficult to add on a second group. But if we succeed anyway in adding a second group, it'll probably add to the meta position. Remember, these don't make it impossible to add the second group, just harder. 